guys, and welcome back to the Weekly What's Up. I'm Tori Nagel. And I'm Olivia Bracia. And this is your Weird National News. A man on a flight dozed off but awoke to find himself alone and locked in the airplane. On Monday, Todd Wagner left Louisiana to visit his sister in California. Before his layover in Houston, Wagner nodded off to sleep. When the plane landed, attendants and passengers did not notice Wagner and exited the plane. According to WTSP, Wagner woke up alone on the locked plane. Fortunately, Wagner had his cell phone and called United Airlines to report that he was locked in the plane. 30 minutes later, Ragnar Wagner was freed and given a free voucher for a flight worth $250. That was seriously my worst fear when I was a little kid and I was on an airplane, that I'd get left on it. Not so dying? I couldn't sleep. <laughs> no, of course not. I no. never thought of that. Come on. <laughs> no, like that was like... Because we went to Italy once and like it was a 12 hour flight or, flight or something like that and I like would not sleep because I thought that I would fall asleep and not wake up and be left on a plane all by myself in Italy. Oh darn. Because of course the plane Be left stay. in Italy to grow up. <laughs> be so well hard. on a plane that'd be terrible. <laughs> this week in weird news, a bride is facing a trial for pushing her groom off a cliff. According to NBC News, a woman named Jordan Lynn Graham is being charged with murder for her new husband Cody Johnson after pushing him off a 200 foot cliff. The incident was said to have occurred only days after the couple tied the knot. Graham's trial is expected to last for an entire week as it will take quite a bit of testimonies to uncover the relationship between the newlyweds. Graham is claiming that when the death occurred, he was grabbing her arm and she was defending herself when he went over. Wow. <laughs> I'm not sure what I have to say to that. Maybe it was to get his money or something and she oh, yeah. acted really quickly. <laughs> Life insurance policy. <laughs> I mean, you never know. <laughs> A man in Lexington, Kentucky has been arrested over 1,500 times. According to CNN, Henry Earl, age 64, has recently been charged with intoxication, making his grand total of hours in jail 6,000. Earl has been imprisoned on Thanksgiving for the past six years and has even been imprisoned on his birthday. I'm starting to think maybe he likes to be in jail. Yeah. You know I mean, how sometimes like criminals actually try to get back in jail because the accommodations are like better yeah, than they get normal life? Yeah, food and place to stay. Not so strange. <laughs> in other news, a lawsuit is being filed in New York in order to gain legal personhood for a champan chimpanzee. According to NBC News, an animal rights group is fighting to legally declare a 26-year-old chimp named Tommy as a legal person with the fundamental right to not be imprisoned. The point of the lawsuit is to gain Tommy's rights and to illegalize him from being detained in a small cage in a shed. The president of the animal rights group says that chimps possess certain complex cognitive abilities that are directly related to human beings. It is the group's hopes that this will cure imprisoned champions like Tommy from their apparent depression. So where are they going to put them if they're not going to have them in cages? Some people keep them as pets. And then the but pets will rip their faces off, so maybe they should be imprisoned. Yeah, I was going to say, aren't like monkeys really, and like chimpanzees, like vicious? Yeah, human rights, or animal they rights groups are stupid. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't mean that. We're really PC this episode, politically correct, way to go. <laughs> A woman in North Georgia sat down on a toilet seat in Home Depot but couldn't get up. According to NBC New York, last week Elena de la Cour used the bathroom in Home Depot and discovered that she was glued to the seat. Someone spread a layer of Loctine GO2 glue on the toilet seat. Paramedics freed de la Cour with WD-40 and she left with ripped skin wounds. The worst part is, de la Cour's sister recorded the whole removal process on her phone. <laughs> the culprit has yet to be caught. Oh, that's actually really funny. I've had WD-40 on me before because I put paint or something on my skin that wouldn't come off. Mm -hmm. That stuff does not, WD-40 is worse than the stuff that I had on before. It does not come off. It is just pure Ugh. oil. Ugh. Her Can sister on her butt? is so mean. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and she recorded it. Yeah. In other news, a man was jailed for charging his electric car at his son's school. According to NBC News, a man from Jordan named Kova Kamune was attending his son's tennis practice session when he plugged the car up to a power outlet outside of the middle school. Kamune was shocked to see a policeman inspecting his car shortly after. He was even more shocked when he was told that he was being arrested for theft. His official charge was for theft of power. Apparently, his arrest was certified legal as he did not get permission to use the school's power source. But you know what's even more crazy is that an electric vehicle advocacy group calculated the total amount of power stolen, and it was equivalent of about a nickel's worth of electricity. So if someone just like plugged in their charger in an elementary school for like their phone, would they still make a big deal about it? I don't know. That's just ridiculous, though, because it was like, first of all, it was like a nickel. Like, you're not going to ask to use permission for every power outlet. Maybe yeah. they were just more ticked off because it was an entire car. I don't know. <laughs> A California robber couldn't find a babysitter, so he brought the baby to his burglary. The Solano County Police Force received word that the owner of a shop in Dixon detained two robbers in his shop on Tuesday. 
When the officer arrived, they searched the robber's car and found a child. After the arrests were made, the child was handed over to Child Protective Services. Well, I hope so. <laughs> like, get her, or they didn't specify whether it was boy or girl, but I hope that child's like, <laughs> gonna be okay. Gender neutral. Yeah. <laughs> in other news, a dog in Arizona is taking the blame for an apartment fire that occurred last Tuesday. According to NBC News, it took nine fire units to put out the fire, leaving the renters to be temporarily homeless. Reportingly, the family was not home when the fire occurred, but the dog was. Apparently, the pet was jumping up on the kitchen counters when its paw hit the stove top burner. Eventually, a flame ignited and the fire spread. No one was harmed in the accident, including the dog, and the Red Cross is currently trying to find a new home for the family. How did the dog get out of that okay? I don't know. That is really strange, especially if, like, nine fire units needed to get... I don't know. Dogs have really good in instincts, though. Uh, it depends on the breed, I feel like. Oh, well. That's all for our <laughs> weird national news, but stay tuned, because up next we have Susanna and Jacob with Weird Science News. Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas. Welcome back to Weekly What's Up. I'm Susanna Shepard. And I'm Jacob Clore. And, and this, this is your Weird, weird Science, science news. news. Today, we're going to show you 11 science-related Christmas gifts to release your inner geek. Let's start with the countdown at number 11. Calendars are wonderful ideas for Christmas, especially since the New Year is coming up. But what about a mineral calendar? One Keystone College volcano, volcanologist, Ian Saginaw, came up with just that. Saginaw created the calendar by using minerals made by his students. I wonder how he did that. Is it like a rock per month or? I was wondering about that too. Is it like a special rock of the month kind of thing? Or is it made out of a rock? I like don't the know. cavemen, they have little strikes for each day. Yeah. That would be actually really cool, actually. Yeah. At number 10, who wouldn't love some space themed bling for Christmas? Denver based artist Susanna Spear has just what you need. She created jewelry using photos from the Mars Curiosity rover and other unmanned expeditions. If your recipient likes Saturn-themed gifts, Spears' Etsy shop has just what you need. Wow, that's quite the... What can you say? Bring in a good name to the name Susanna. Yeah, she's quite the... <laughs> she's going to have quite the moneymaker with that. At number nine, if you are really into science fiction, you should check out the Star Wars-themed bathing suits by the Australian company Black Milk. The company also has Star Wars themed dresses with everything from the Death Star to a frozen Han Solo to the Ewoks. I would actually buy that. That sounds really cool. That sounds like something you'd buy for a Halloween party or something I would like that. wear that. <laughs> I, I should do that next year. I might actually. <laughs> At number eight, if you're more of a drinker, a chemistry themed cocktail set may be more of your speed. The set includes Erlenmeyer flasks, a beaker, a shaker with their own sciency symbols on them. The set also includes shot glasses in the shapes of tiny beakers and other laboratory-ready flasks. Wow, it looks like the scientist wants to get down. <laughs> Mix your own chemicals, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Number seven, if you're into doing math while checking the time, you can buy this clock that has equations instead of the familiar numbers on it. Luckily for us math versions, they are mostly in subtraction, addition, multiplication, and division. Imagine if there's like this huge formula for the number three. That would be so hard. I'd just be like, wait, like that's the, just three. Like sine over cosine yeah. divided by Ugh. four times something. I'm, I'm done with math. I I'd just, be like, I'm uh, done. I'll just use the sun or something. Yeah. At number six, for the artist who has a soft spot for chemistry, a chemistry-themed crayon set would be the perfect gift. The labels for the crayons contain the names of the chemicals that make them the color they are. The set of 120 stick-on labels comes with instructions on which labels go with which color, in addition to a chemistry lesson for us chemical virgins. Wow, imagine how hard. You must really be a sciencey geek to be able to place all of them on each individual crayon and know which one it is. Imagine how long the names would be. Normally they're just like pansy pink or something, but it would be like carbon, hydrogen, like so many different like big names yeah. combined instead. Yeah, I don't think you're a five-year-old going into kindergarten would understand those words. Mm -mm. At number five, it's the year of faster than night neutrinos, so it can't hurt to be ready for time-traveling hijinks, even if the veracity of the findings is still up in the air. 
This shirt has you covered, as long as you're wearing it. You'll have the basic info you need to rebuild modern amenities, such as the radio, vaccinations, and the atom bomb. But maybe hold, hold off on the last one, please. We don't want an accident. <laughs> we could change the course of history with this t-shirt. Yeah, pretty much. That would be awesome. At number four, the common cold has never looked so cute. Giant Microbes sells plush versions of microbes and maladies from syphilis to the Black Death. The rhinovirus or the common cold is the lumpy bright blue fellow on the right side of the photograph. You can also buy your loved ones friendly microbes such as yeast or teeny tiny critters such as dust mites. Trust us, this is the only way you're going to give someone Ebola and not get thanked for it. Or, and get thanked for it, just kidding. Wow, that's just like, that's more like a pranked gift, not like an actual gift. I mean, yeah, maybe the thank you wouldn't be like full hearted, like it'd be like, Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> but you'd still be getting a thank you for it instead of have watching your friend die. Yeah. Well, at number three, many old photograph collections are buried in library vaults and dusty books. But the company iConcepts works with nonprofit organizations to sell prints that would otherwise go unseen. Currently, four sets of historical prints are available, memorizing, memorializing Amelia Earhart, the 1913 U.S. Open, the 1930s Red Sox, and Galapagos Island sketches by Charles Darwin. Classy and cool. That is kind of, that's pretty nice. Yeah. Bringing history back to life. Yeah, in the form of art. At number two, if no one on your list wants these, could you send them to us? What Christmas tree couldn't be improved by ornaments featuring Marie Curie, Jane Goodall, Mary Leakey, and other female science greats? Buy just one or get the whole set. And if you prefer, a mixed gender group of geniuses, the same seller also makes ornaments out of male scientists from Albert Einstein to Carl Sagan. That'd be funny if you're like getting the ornaments out of the box and you pick one up and it's just like, <gasps> this is Albert Einstein. <laughs> I'd put it on my tree. Yeah. At number one, of course, instead of giving the gift of science trinkets, you could give the gift of actual science. The Sci Fun Challenge is a project in which scientists are raising money for their research from small donations from the general public. You can choose from 49 projects scanning the gamut from research on depression to studies on sea turtles. Or maybe you're into ancient Roman RNA, the evolution of duck genitalia, or algae biofuel. Take your pick. Many researchers will send you a thank you gift for donating, such as a bumper sticker or exclusive access to photos from the field. Whichever you choose, act quick because the challenge ends December 15th. So that's in a couple days, so you better Better jump up. on it. Yeah. I wonder what the bumper sticker would state. I have no idea. Maybe it's like, I support science. I don't know. <laughs> I'd put that on my car. Well, that's all we have for Weird Science News. Have a great Christmas, everybody. See you next year. And coming up next, we have Corey and Key with Girls vs. Food. Merry Christmas and welcome back to the Weekly What's Up. I'm Key. And I'm Corey, and this is Girls vs. Food. food. Today we're going to reveal some of the foods that are in fact named after people. Sounds interesting. Hmm, you know what I'm craving right now? Some German chocolate cake. Ah! Es ist your liquor. That's well, not yes. even right. I can't even pronounce German. <laughs> but yes, it means it is delicious, right? You know, we'll just continue with it. <laughs> Why, well, yes, it is delicious. <laughs> but German chocolate cake is, in fact, American. It's named after a guy by the name of Sam German, who developed a pre sweet and dark baking chocolate in 1852. My whole life is a lie. His last name was actually German. It was, yeah, it's not even that's, a German that's cake. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and I sort of wish my name was German. All right, uh, one of my favorite things to get at D2 Brunch is Eggs Benedict. They are so good. <laughs> You're obsessed. But they're actually named after a real guy. In 1894, a man by the name of Lemuel... Is it, is it Lemuel? It is Lemuel. Or is it Lemuel? It's Lemuel. Lemuel Benedict got drunk on tequila and woke up the next morning with a serious hangover. Sound, you know, sounds, sounds like, like me on my 21st yeah, birthday. Yeah, she said 21st birthday. Uh, <laughs> we, he walked into Wardo Hotel and requested a breakfast made with poached eggs, 
hollandaise sauce, toast, and bacon. And it thus created the delicious breakfast that we eat today. Who knew that hangover creates such a delicious breakfast treat? Maybe that's why I, maybe that's why I want it every like Sunday morning. I do too. That explains a lot actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alfredo sauce is one of those things we all love. And it's Alfredo Delilio. We have to thank for that. Delilio. Delilio. It's Italian, it's yes. After he added extra butter to his pasta sauce recipe in 1914 to please his pregnant wife, his new Alfredo sauce became a huge success. That's so important to make Pre sure that your yeah, pregnant exactly. wife gets the cravings that she wants. Men are always complaining about our like weird cravings and stuff, exactly. but like, you're welcome. Unless it's alcohol, then you know that's totally out of the question. <laughs> you know, you're craving chocolate cake. You know what I'm craving? What? Nachos. Muy caliente. Muy, muy caliente. <laughs> si, muy fuego. But an interesting fact about nachos is that they're in fact named after a person. Ignacio Nacho Anaya was working at a restaurant in Texas in 1943. When customers asked him to make a snack, he fried some tortilla pieces up and covered them with cheese, forming what we know today as nachos. I always thought nachos were the name of like the chip. Yeah, that's what I thought too. I didn't realize it was a guy's name. So like not kid nacho. nacho Libre. What, what, what does nacho? I, can think of. I think it's macho. It's macho, not nacho. Libre. No, it's definitely nacho. No, libre. no, it's macho. Macho as in like no, manly, not. libre. <laughs> it's definitely no, it's not. Right, free your mouth. <laughs> okay, whatever. Anyway. <laughs> hey, Key, how does a turkey Portsmouth sound to you? A what? A Portsmouth. What's that? That is what a sandwich was actually almost called. Back long ago, when John Montague, the Earl of Sandwich, was playing cards with some friends. He asked for meat between two slices of bread so he could eat with one hand and keep playing cards with the other hand. What a lazy dude. Yeah, I know. But when Montague was appointed as an earl years earlier, he had a choice between the name Sandwich. Sorry, there's just something on your back. Portsmouth, meaning we could be eating Portsmouths today. You know, I prefer it was Portsmouth because then, like, you know, when a guy tells a woman, get me a sandwich, it'd be like, get me a Portsmouth. It sounds like it a sounds name of a fancy. cigarette. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if it was the name of a cigarette. <laughs> it's not. But... <laughs> I, I swear, I've seen a ship with, like, Portsmouth on the back of well, it. Well, it's placed in England. Okay, well, that explains okay, a lot. Then. Never mind. <laughs> Last, but certainly not least, who would have thought that Kung Pao Chicken was actually named after somebody? I mean, I could believe that, but, you know? In the late 19th century, there was a governor in China by the name of King Pao Den, and his title was, you guessed it, Kung Pao. Legend has it, this dish was made for him because he had bad teeth and difficulty chewing. That's kind of That's weird. pretty cool. If yeah. you have like a dish name for you, because you, 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 you can't chew. Your teeth are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for uh, this week's episode of Girls vs. Food. Bon appetit. bon appetit. See you next year. Merry Christmas and, and Happy New, New Year. year. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas! Welcome back to the Weekly What's Up. I'm Macy Kinder. And I'm Rhiannon Miller. And, and these, these are, are your Weird World facts. facts. Christmas is celebrated all around the world in, on December 25th in many different countries. You may be used to hearing Merry Christmas, but what do people say in other countries? Buona Natalia, Italian, Feliz Natal, Portuguese, Gajul, Swedish. You know, I never really thought about that. People don't say Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas in other countries. But like now that we go to tech, like I hear so many different languages like just walking on the campus. But I don't, I hate when people say happy Christmas. Yeah. I'm like, what is happy a happy Christmas? Christmas? I feel like you should be I, saying that in like an English accent. Like, happy, happy Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> For Santa to visit every house, he would have to travel at 650 miles per second or 3,000 times the speed of sound. Okay, you know, it's I'm possible. a firm leader in Santa, so if he wants to go that fast, Let it's possible. It. I mean, it's Santa. The it, guy goes down chimneys. Everything's for God's possible. Sake, people. For God's <laughs> sake, people. Santa can do it. The Christmas abbreviation Xmas is thought of by some to be sacrilegious, but in fact, the first letter of the Greek word for Christ is chi, which is X. Before the invention of the printing press, Xmas was often used in print to save time and ink. I mean, I guess I don't like Xmas only because. You know, I guess from like a Christian point of view, I feel like it's taking the word Christ out of it, but that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Like if Kai is the word for Christ and X is Kai, right, yeah. then uh, you know, at least yeah. it's not 
sacrilegious. Mm -hmm. I mean, I understand that. If you're texting someone, sometimes I guess you could say yeah, Xmas. Like, but if you're like speaking to someone, you should probably I just feel say like it's Christmas. more Christmassy like to say yeah. Merry Christmas. Where did the candy cane come from? In a small town in Indiana, there was a candy maker who wanted to spread the name of Jesus around the world. He invented the Christmas candy cane, incorporating symbols for the birth, ministry, and death of Jesus Christ. He began with a stick of pure white, hard candy to symbolize the virgin birth. The candy maker formed the stick into a jade to represent the name of Jesus. It can also represent the staff of the Good Shepherd. He thought that the candy was too plain, so he stained it with a red stripe to symbolize the blood shed by Christ on the cr cross. I had no idea. Yeah, I didn't know that. Like, if you look at the candy cane, like, I feel like we hand it out this way. But I guess if it's a J for Jesus. J for Jesus. Have a candy cane. It's a J for Jesus. It's backwards. Yeah, I feel like they messed up. But I guess that makes sense, you know. Yeah. I just had no idea. I didn't even realize that. I thought that. it was just, Quint, you know, red and green Christmas. But that's actually blood. And now <laughs> that's actually I, blood. I, I feel a little bit weirder eating it. <laughs> I am now eating not only the virgin birth, but, but the, the death, death of, of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ so. <laughs> Jingle Bells was originally written for a Thanksgiving celebration in 1857. And where are the bells? Do you go to Thanksgiving and ever hear Ring a Jingle Bell? Bells. Like Jingle, jingle Bells? bells. No. But if you think about it, this says nothing about Thanksgiving or a turkey or anything. Yeah, like. it's like jingle all the way. Oh, find us ride in one of those. Well, I guess yeah. that's nothing really about Christmas either, but no. I feel like bells are a Christmas thing. No. If you received all the gifts listed in the 12 Days of Christmas song, you would receive 364 presents. Wow, nice. that's a lot of presents. But honestly, who wants, like, what is it, like 12 maids milking or something? Or yeah. 12 lords to leap in? Like, what are you going to do with all these leaping lords? Like the five golden rings? Like, all right, that, we can keep I that can one. That. Okay, we'll keep that one. <laughs> a partridge in a pear tree? I want it. Two turtle doves? <laughs> like, I don't know. There's some, there are some like, some weird ones. Like, like I said, a leaping lord and five maids milking. Maids like, of milk does that come with a cow? <laughs> like, do you have to pay me. extra for the cow? Does the cow come included? Yeah, like, maids, I, I, I assume so. <laughs> For the rings, like I said, we'll we will go ahead and take yeah, yeah. five golden rings. <laughs> the average shopper walks around five miles walking around stores, parking lots, and malls. Wow, that's a lot of exercise. I believe that. I, yeah, I feel that way. When I go to the mall, I'm like, oh, I go to one end, and like, I have to go back to the other end yeah. now, only to go back to the other <laughs> end. And then if you think about parking lots, however, you know my biggest pet peeve around Christmas Day is? What? People who shop at the mall will drive around for 30 minutes to find a parking spot, just like right next to the mall instead of just parking like yeah. an extra hundred feet away. I mean, that's what's wrong with America. That's probably yeah, why. Yeah, that's you know. why obesity is so prevalent because everyone wants to park up front. Yeah, they can't just walk an extra hundred feet. Well, bring your walking shoes next time you want to go to the mall. The weeks leading up to Christmas are the biggest shopping weeks of the year. In fact, stores usually make 70% of their revenue in the month preceding Christmas. Wow, I wow. believe that. So what, they just make like zero dollars all year, Christmas <laughs> comes along, and all suddenly it's worth it to have, you know, like a Charlotte yeah. Ruth or a Belk? <laughs> People spend an average of two hours and 27 minutes wrapping Christmas presents. So that kind of, you know, that kind of sucks so long. I mean, because sometimes you're just going to get it ripped off. Like, I don't know about you, but... My four-year-old nieces, you know, I spend some time, buy them a gift, wrap it. They don't care. They, they just don't care. rip, rip the wrapping off. Shreds. And then they throw the present. Like, they need something better than what I just gave them because apparently. No, what's worse is if you have, like, little babies, they would much rather be interested in, like, the bow and the ripping yeah. Christmas things than the actual present. You're like, wait a second. I just spent, like, $50 on a <laughs> gift. Don't you want to play with that? Instead, they're like, oh, I got a bow and a box. Happy. Happy. <laughs> the joy. 53% of Americans will re-gift this year fact i'm probably gonna re-gift this year <laughs> that is a fact or you know it's worse i think the worst part is if you can't re-gift it and it's just that useless i mean i give me don't get me wrong i want to be appreciative for everything yeah, yeah, i've yeah. given but of course when you get a bunch of knickknacks and i get like eight million pairs of fluffy socks and i get you know like Whoa, things i'll never use awesome. my, i don't know socks might be usable but my brother I actually re-gifted something last year that he got for christmas which i saw him open and gave it to me what what was it do you remember you're just like Thanks, brother. I, I guess you don't like it, and I guess now I'll have to re-gift it to someone else. <laughs> Somebody else. Well, that's all today we have for the Christmas facts. I'm Rhiannon Miller. And I'm Macy Kinder. Merry Christmas. We'll see you next year. <laughs> Graham is claiming that when the death occurred, he was grabbing her arm and she was defending herself when... So let's spread a lower, or bleh. <laughs> a layer. A layer. For your inner geek. At number.
September 11th, we have calendars. Chris, oh, it's get sad. Sorry. We need to. A... Has <laughs> just. Oh, God. I need to read it because I started laughing. I got excited. Susanna. My name! <laughs> Cute. Giant microbes. Microbes. Cells. What? I guess it's Emma. These. Could you send them to us? Wait. Number two, could you send them to us? Interesting fact about nachos is that they're in fact not, they're in, I'm oh, sorry. 